what the Dallas Cowboys have figured out. We're gonna be going through that in today's video and five other stories. So make sure to like this video and if you want more Dallas Cowboys content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel hitting that red button down below. So the first story is the Dallas Cowboys have figured out their defensive problem. If so, that could truly make the unit something to fear over the remainder of the 2022 season. Having shut down both Dalvin Cook and Saquon Barkley in the span of only four days, winning both games in the process, Micah Parsons and Co. enter their mini bye week feeling good about their improvements. I thought we did pretty good. Parsons said after Dallas defense allowed Barkley to rush for only 39 yards on 11 carries with one touchdown on Thanksgiving Day. He might have had one, maybe two explosive runs. But, for the most part, we contained him and made sure everything was short. They passed way more than we expected. I think we did a pretty good job for the way he's been playing this year. To his point, Barkley has been resurgent this season, racking up more than 953 rushing yards and six rushing touchdowns through the Giants' first 10 games of the 2022 season. 1,100 163 total yards from scrimmage. The Cowboys didn't allow him to get involved in the receiving game either, routinely breaking out passes to the flat to prevent him from finding momentum in that area either. Barkley finishing the day with four grabs for only 13 receiving yards. Wherever he went, the Cowboys were swarming to meet him. This became key in stopping third down conversions by the Giants, forcing them to fail on eight of their 11 attempts. Just getting off the field, said Parsons following the 28-20 victory over the Giants that was not as close as the final score would have you believe. I think that is the key, the more we can get the ball back to the offense, it's better for things to get going. The more drives we can get them, the more they can perfect their rhythm, the more they can put points on the board as you can see towards the end of the game. It was another slow start for Dak Prescott and the Cowboys offense but, with the help of a stellar defensive outing, they were able to see their mistakes either less or deleted entirely before coming alive in the third quarter to the tune of 21 unanswered points after falling to a 13-7 deficit before halftime. Yeah, we had to come out and fight, Parsons said. Definitely not a pretty first round. Definitely not the way you want to start but, for the most part we came out in that second half and dominated. The team is now 3-1 since the return of Prescott, and using their loss, per Parsons, as fuel to power them forward and having shown them demons they probably wouldn't have noticed if they won at Lambeau Field, but were instead forced to confront in gruesome fashion, entering their mini bye week on a two-game win streak. Over two of the most competitive teams in the NFC gives Parsons, and the Cowboys a lot to be thankful for. We just got to count our blessings and be thankful and having gratitude. We were able to be healthy enough to come out here and play, he said healthy enough to leave the field. Just gratitude that we made it to another day, another Thanksgiving. That's what it is really all about. It's so special here because I think everyone is here, thankful to be here, representing the cause, and just thankful overall. Currently sitting at 8-3 to three on the season, in sole possession of second place in the NFC East and within striking distance of the Philadelphia Eagles atop the division, the Cowboys have everything in front of them heading into the month of December. We are building in the right direction, said Parsons. Right now, that direction is due north. The second story is Odell Beckham Jr. sends cryptic message to Dallas Cowboys ahead of blockbuster move. Odell Beckham Jr. has sent a cryptic message ahead of a potential move to the Dallas Cowboys as he nears a comeback after almost a year away. The superstar wide receiver remains a free agent this season after spending most of the year rehabbing his knee injury sustained in the Super Bowl. Beckham scored the first touchdown of the game as his Los Angeles Rams would go on to be champions when they defeated the Cincinnati Bengals. After failing to agree a long-term deal with the Rams, who themselves are having a woeful season and are likely already out of playoff contention, Beckham will now have his pick of which team he can sign as we reach the final few games of the regular season. Season. The 30-year-old has already indicated that he will only sign with a championship contender, with many initially believing the Buffalo Bills to be favorites. However, the two most likely landing spots for Beckham now appear to be either his former New York Giants or Dallas Cowboys. Those two teams faced off last night, with the Cowboys comfortably winning, just days after a dominant performance over the red-hot Minnesota Vikings. And with many believing a move to Dallas may be close, Beckham tweeted after their win last night. He wrote, Happy Thanksgiving with an eyes and laughing emoji. The Cowboys offense has been one of the more potent in the league this season, but do need help at receiver alongside C.D. Lamb. After they let Amory Cooper lead this past off season to join the Cleveland Browns, Beckham's addition, along with star running backs Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard could make the team Super Bowl favorites, alongside the Kansas City Chiefs. 
For the Giants, they have now lost three of their last four games, falling to the Cowboys, Detroit Lions, and Seattle Seahawks, and falling two games behind division-leading Philadelphia Eagles. The Cowboys now have a very favorable schedule, facing three struggling teams in consecutive weeks in the Indianapolis Colts, Houston Texans, and Jacksonville Jaguars, as they'll look to make a run at claiming the number one seed. The third story in today's video is NFL analysts believe Cowboys surging offense as one key issue to fix after thriving in short week. Cowboys offensive players can enjoy their weekend. After scoring 68 points in two wins, converting 67.9% of third downs and allowing no sacks while playing up to 149 snaps across five days, they earned that much. Rest and recover. Come Monday, work awaits to correct a key area. The offense was flagged seven times in Thursday's 28-20 win over the New York Giants. Four of those penalties were for a false start. Dallas has committed 14 false starts in six home games compared with only two in five road games. No NFL offense has more false start penalties at home than the Cowboys. Coach Mike McCarthy suggested Friday morning that the offense may have tried to do too much before the snap. I think when we get back in here, there's some things we got to look at, McCarthy said. We were on a short week. We used a lot of carryover scheme and concept up front, particularly in the run game. That's something we've got to take a look at. What I'm referring to is when you play this Thanksgiving week, your volume is always your biggest challenge. We were very confident in the way we've been running the ball. I learned a long time ago when your mental mistakes are up, your volume has to come down. That's something we're going to take a real hard look at when we get back together offensively. Monday's meetings could be virtual. McCarthy said that the Cowboys are considering that change in light of illness that has swept the team facility in the past week. Wednesday's meeting schedule will be normal, leading up to a Sunday evening home game against the Indianapolis Colts. The other three offensive penalties Thursday for the Cowboys were holding calls on right guard Zach Martin, left tackle Tyler Smith, and tight end Dalton Schultz. No time needs to be spent correcting Martin's flag. That was only the sixth holding call accepted against the seven-time Pro Bowler in his nine-year NFL career. One reason for the offensive success this week was the usage rhythm found when dispatching running backs and tight ends. In games with Cowboys running back Ezekiel Elliott also active, running back Tony Pollard has taken 15 or more carries only twice in his four-year NFL career. Both instances happened during the two-game, five-game swing against the Minnesota Vikings on Sunday and Giants on Thursday. Likewise, there have been only two games all year in which four different Cowboys tight ends, Dalton Schultz, Jake Ferguson, Peyton Hendershot, and Sean McKeon, each played 15 or more offensive snaps. Again, the precedent came Sunday and Thursday. The four tight ends shared a field on two goal line snaps Thursday, including Hendershot two-yard touchdown run. The group, whom tight ends coach Linda Wells refers to as the four horsemen, celebrated by playing whack-a-mole in a Salvation Army red kettle. The fourth story is Cowboys set timeline for Tyron Smith return. The time is nearing for the return of Tyron Smith, and it appears he might be back on the field for the Dallas Cowboys sooner than many anticipated. When the eight-time pro bowler went down in practice ahead of the 2022 season with a major leg, knee injury, the team was adamant his season wasn't over and that he'd be back in uniform for a potential playoff run. Specifically, Smith hamstring tendon detached from the bone in, near his knee. He's been rehabbing vehemently but with the appropriate amount of caution under the watchful eye of renowned trainer Britt Brown, and the Cowboys front office has finally given a timeline on when the four-time All-Pro could make his 2022 debut. You know, because he's three or four weeks out, we haven't had that discussion, Executive Vice President and Director of Player Personnel Stephen Jones said, when that time does arrive, what will be the offensive line rotation for Dallas? After all, rookie first-round pick Tyler Smith has been playing well beyond his years at left tackle, despite having not taken any reps at the position in training camp, and Connor McGovern has leveled up his play in his first year as full-time starter at left guard. We've been so focused week to week and game to game, getting these guys better as a unit, Jones added, as that time nears, I'm sure Coach and Kellen, Joe Philbin and that group will have some discussions about what gives us the best chance to win when Tyron gets back. That said, Jones did drop a rather sizable hint that you likely won't see the elder Smith playing swing tackle, given his resume when healthy. He's an all-pro, Hall of Fame type player and if you're going to have your best five guys out there, I'm sure he's one of them, said Jones. The fifth story is Dak Prescott believes Cowboys need more discipline to fix penalty issues. The Cowboys certainly sent fans home happy after a 21-point second half that finished off the season sweep of the Giants in the 28-20 win on Thursday, but it was not all pretty. Part of the game was frustrating to watch for Cowboy fans as penalties, and turnovers kept the game closer than many predicted. And yes, it was frustrating for the
the guys involved as well. We've got to, first off, stop with the penalties. Prescott said, we've got to be more disciplined. In the first two quarters of the Thanksgiving game, Dallas was called for seven penalties while Prescott threw two interceptions, all of which helped out the Giants to a 13-7 halftime lead. Some will blame the penalties on having a short week of preparation, but being heavily penalized is nothing new for the Cowboys. Dallas entered Thursday as the fifth most penalized team in the NFL. A 13 penalty outing later, they are tied with the Denver Broncos for first at 83. And yes, this is reminiscent of last year, when Dallas was also number one in an unfortunate fortunate category. The Cowboys must. Dak said, stop hurting ourselves on drives and self-inflicted wounds, whether it be me turning the ball over, being too aggressive or not on the same page as receivers. Ball starts. We've got to clean all of that stuff up. Miscommunication between Prescott and his receivers. Check. Weird false start penalties. Check. Two guys going in motion at the same time. Check. All of it was overcome by a 21-point second half, but being minus two in the turnover margin and racking up double-figure penalties and being a true contender, those things are not a sustainable combination. The Cowboys know this, which is a start, or in their case on Thursday, maybe a false start.